Hello and welcome back to Gapey's Garden. It's time for our annual Garden Fails video. So I'm going to be taking you around the garden and showing you what did not do so well this year. This year's biggest challenge was the weather. We had a very late spring and summer just did not want to start, but it finally did and things started growing, but not everything did so well. So let's take a look and see what happened this year. Hey guys, we've got our first fail of the season and it's on our overwintered pink radicchio, which survived wonderfully outside of the greenhouse under this row cover. And we have had a vole problem in this bed. So I put out a few traps last night, but it hasn't caught anything yet. But we did catch the vole on our Arlo camera, making a little feast out of our radicchio. So I can, I'll show you some of the, the damage it did to some of these. So you can see that one there has a big, huge hole right next to it. And it is just devastated, that one. And I've already pulled out a few of the others. We've got holes all over the place. So I'm trying to set a mouse trap there in that hole and see if we can get them that way. So we'll check back tomorrow and see if we get something. We're having a few issues with the tomato starts this year. This is a first for me. This kind of looks like it could be blight, but I'm not really sure. This is the supernova variety and the only variety that has this problem. It's like some dried spots on some of the leaves. If you know what this is, if it's early blight, let me know because I'm not sure. I've never seen it before. Very strange. So I've moved these out of the grow room because I don't want this to possibly infect any other varieties. So I've got them actually outside right now and we'll see if they improve. This tomato here is one of my most productive. It's called Supernova. It's kind of a very small plum kind of paste tomato. And I almost didn't grow this one this year. Um, the seedlings were very very kind of sickly and I ended up not selling any of these because I was just they just did not look good they look like they had some kind of a fungus almost like blight the other variety that I'm having an issue with this year is the San Marzano Redorita I'm not sure if you can see it on the stem there but it's starting to turn white and kind of puffy so I think this is some kind of fungus and I have been getting this pretty much every year on a couple varieties for the last several years. And once it gets that, the plant seems to just go downhill. Sometimes I can repot it deeper. Um, the fungus, it's not um, from the, the bottom of the plant. You can see it's actually normal up to the cotyledon leaves. And it's above the cotyledons where it starts getting fungusy. Um, but I have been able to save a few by burying the stem really deep and bringing it outside. And once it's outside, it seems to do better. Oh, we've got a chicken here trying to eat my tomato starts. Um, but yeah, these, I'm just going to toss these because I don't think they're going to make it. They've got it pretty bad. And so far, none of the other starts this year have any problem like this. I am going to start trying a different potting soil because I think maybe the pro mix retains too much moisture and that could be causing it, um, but it does only affect some varieties. This one here is probably the most fun variety I've grown in a really long time. It's called San Marzano Redorita and every time I post a picture of these people think that these are peppers. This is a Charmel melon and this is turning out not to be a great year for growing melons because it's been so cold. But I'm not sure what happened to this one. It just started wilting and I just planted it in the ground a couple days ago. So I'm not sure what's going on. It still is in the ground and it feels pretty strong. So I'm not sure what has caused it to wilt. But I don't think it's going to make it. Thinking we should dig it up and see if we can find anything wrong. We've got roots there. So everything looks pretty good from there. Not sure what happened. Oh, looks like a lot of the roots 
are detached from the plant, so that could have done it. One person online said it could have been ants, which I think I have seen some ants in this area, so it is possible, but yep, that one's not going to grow. We've also been having a big starling problem this year. So starlings seem to like to top off plants and it got to this jalapeno plant here. You can see the top is removed, but luckily it didn't remove it any lower because we are seeing some new growth coming out the side. So hopefully we'll still get a decent pepper plant out of that, but it did set it back quite a bit. Another problem I've been having this year is something is removing the roots from the plants. So I've had this happen on a few of the lettuce plants. So this is the most recent victim. I also had it happen to a melon that I had planted. And I think that is being caused by maybe wire worms or some kind of underground worm. I've been thinking about getting some beneficial nematodes to help with that. Let me know if that's something you've been successful with. Now, another problem I'm having, and I think it's probably the starlings too, that I just noticed, this onion plant is completely removed from the soil. So I think they are digging those out. And there's another one that is, looks like they tried to pull out, but they didn't get it all the way out. So I'm just having to plant those back in the ground and hopefully they'll be okay. But when they were pulling out the younger ones, I didn't catch them soon enough and they just ended up dying. So I, I did have a few extra onions that I was able to plant. And I think we got most of the, those back filled. But I have to come out here and check them every now and then to make sure they didn't pull out more. There's another one that looks like they tried to pull out. So I just got to keep an eye on them. They don't seem to bother the larger ones too much. So those seem to be doing okay. It's the smaller ones that they keep pulling out. This is a tray of lettuces that I just potted up the other day. Um, this tray is doing really good. This tray mostly doing good, but you'll see in some of these trays a lot of empty spots because I've had some birds or rodents come and pick out several of the seedlings. So I'm missing quite a few here. I've also had some nibbles taken out of my cabbage. This one is almost completely. This is our new patch that's along the chicken run here. And I've mostly got flowers in here, but I also am trialing growing some sesame in this bed. And I wasn't sure if it would work here because it's not that hot and we have a pretty short growing season, but this is one of them. And surprisingly, it's already flowering. These are supposed to get much, much taller than this, so I'm not sure if our weather is just a little confusing to the sesame, but since it's flowering, there's a chance I might actually get some seeds from it. So we'll have to wait and see. Here's a fall update on the sesame seeds I tried growing this year. So this is what it ended up growing to, and Surprisingly, it actually did get some seed pods on there and they feel like they could possibly be dry. Now, I think sesame is supposed to grow much, much taller than this. Uh, so I wouldn't call this a, quite a success, but it wasn't a complete failure. So let's take a look inside one of these pods and see what we got. All right, so here are a couple pods that I just harvested. Now this was the only plant that actually produced any flowers or pods. The rest just ended up kind of dying. So I grew a black variety and a tan variety. So we're going to take a look. I don't know which one this is. So it looks like we've got a few seeds in there. Not super easy to get out. So it would take a lot of plants and a lot of time to harvest sesame. All right, so it looks like we got some black sesame seeds here. So that's pretty cool. Not sure it's worth growing. Maybe if we had a better, warmer year, it would have produced more. But it was kind of fun experiment to do. Here's what's left of our poor desert king that died back to the ground over the winter. 
It just has had a hard time recovering. It is trying to put out some new growth here at the base. It is first week of July and it's really not making much progress. We don't have any leaves actually coming out. Just some green stems are coming out in a few places. So I don't have high hopes for this guy. So these are probably my most pathetic starts that I've ever grown. These are my well, supposed to be my fall and winter greens. I have some lettuces in there and some a couple varieties of cabbages and it's been in the 90s for the last week and it's just way too hot for them outside. So I did bring them inside knowing that and even inside it was in the 80s so they didn't really like that very much at all. And the cabbages you can see the leaves are pretty eaten up. Well, they ended up getting cabbage worms and I didn't notice it right away. So they got pretty eaten up by those. I did finally squish them all and I think I may have saved them, but they're just really not doing well at all. We had some more challenges again in the greenhouse with the eggplants and the melon. So we have two of the three eggplants here. They're all three different varieties, but two of them have not set a single eggplant. And these two were actually ones that I started weeks earlier than the other one. So they do have plenty of flowers, but just not setting any pods. So I'm not sure if there's a pollination issue or what, uh, but I did trim this one and this one down quite a bit just the other day because I am starting to see some signs of spider mites again on the leaves. So you can see the leaves are kind of, have this white speckled kind of thing on them. And that is a sign of spider mites. So that is a problem I, I had last year as well on both the melons and the eggplants. The melon so far is not showing any signs of it. It's just the eggplants. So I may end up actually pulling these out because well, two of them, as I mentioned, are just not producing any. Um, I might just leave this one here in, which has lots of eggplants, and I've already harvested quite a few as well. So this one is doing really good. This one is called Hansel. And then the melon, the problem I'm having with the melon is it's just not setting any fruit at all. And I think it could be a pollination issue, but it's growing all the way out the door of the greenhouse. So it's pretty long and it has put out quite a few side shoots which I've cut off because I don't want it um, going all over the greenhouse because it's 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 just kind of taking over. So I may end up just pulling that out because it's just not setting any. And this is a variety that takes a lot longer to harvest. So if it hasn't set any by now, it's not really going to have time to mature. So it is going to be coming out. Our cosmos were just gigantic this year and were pretty late blooming. This one here was supposed to be an apricot lemonade, but as you can see, it's just a very bright pink. Not total fail, but it wasn't what it was supposed to be, unfortunately. So this was by far our worst year for growing corn. The first two rows are an early variety and they actually did pretty well. I did get an ear off of most of those, but these ones on the backside here are from corn seeds that I saved a couple years ago, and they did not grow any ears of corn. And those that did, they're like really high up on the corn stalk. So you can see that ear of corn way up high, like I can barely reach it. So that I don't think is supposed to grow that way. I don't think it's going to reach maturity either because this is a fairly late season drying corn. So corn was a little bit of a fail this year. Now this is my fall and winter garden bed and we've been having a really big problem with voles this year. So I did have some radicchio planted where these holes are, but I'm pretty sure there's a vole that pretty much sucked down the, the radicchio plant there and also right there. I still have quite a few left, but slowly one by one, they are disappearing to the voles. So we did get this gopher hawk trap that everyone raves about. So we're gonna try and catch them with that. But we have been pretty lucky getting the smaller voles with just a regular mouse trap. So we've caught about a dozen voles so far in one of the other beds. 
So here in this bed is where we've got all the traps set up because there was a lot of vole and mice activity in this bed. So we've got the traps covered because we don't want to catch birds in them. Um, but also in this bed, we've got what was supposed to be some fall lettuce, but it pretty much immediately bolted. So we weren't able to harvest any of that. Thanks to our crappy weather, none of the in-ground figs are gonna have enough time to ripen. We have several small figs on this one here, and you can see my fig update video that I posted um, last week and see how the rest are doing. But this one is not gonna reach maturity, unfortunately. Maybe next year. I'm also having a challenge with cabbages this year. So this one is fairly large, but it's just really not putting out a head of cabbage. and. I think one of the reasons may be because we've got a little aphid infestation down here. Now I did spray these off uh, the other day, but it looks like they've multiplied even more since then. So I don't think we're going to have any luck getting ahead out of this cabbage or these other ones because they're just really too small. This is also surprisingly the worst year we've ever had for zucchini. I grew the Goldini zucchini like I normally do, and we had hardly any zucchini. I definitely did not have a surplus. It almost looked like they had a pollination issue, which I've never had a problem with zucchini before. They just did not grow well at all. It's the first year I didn't have enough to participate in the sneak zucchini on your neighbor's porch day. So that was a bummer. So it seems growing tomatoes in a can is a lot more of a challenge than growing peppers in a can. I think both of these were orange hat, which is a micro dwarf variety. And this one just looks terrible. It has no tomatoes set on it. It just didn't work at all. But this other one here, I believe the same variety, actually did get some tomatoes on it and they are starting to ripen. But the plant just looks pretty terrible. But the peppers, on the other hand, look much better. This was the mini chocolate, looks pretty good, has some ripe peppers on it. And then we've got the Count Dracula here. Um, it's got one pepper that's ripening up there, but it looks pretty decent. And then we've got our marbles here, which has got a couple of pods ripening up. I had a bit of a fail with the winter squash that I grew this year. So they're from Save Seeds, and I grew both butternut and delicata last year next to each other and I think they crossed. So this was supposed to be a butternut, but as you can see, the color is really dark green. It's actually kind of pretty, um, but I'm not sure how that's gonna taste, but we're gonna give it a try. Now here's another one that I grew that was supposed to be the butternut and definitely not a butternut. So it must have crossed with the delicata as well, but it looks totally different than the other one. And it's huge. It's almost like a big, overgrown zucchini so I don't know how that one's gonna taste either but hey we're gonna give it a try I hope you enjoyed this year's garden fails I'll put a few links to previous year's garden fails in the description of this video if you want to check them out let me know what failed in your garden this year thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe you can also find me on Instagram Twitter and Facebook